Welcome back to another video. Our topic today will be predecessors in Gantt charts. So we have a Gantt chart maker Excel template which enables the user create Gantt charts which are fully customizable and you can alter the colors and filter the tasks that you want to display on the Gantt chart and a lot more. But the template does not provide an inbuilt way of handling predecessors. Predecessors are nothing but dependencies between your tasks. So for example, if you have two tasks, task one and task two, and then if you say the task two can only begin after task one is complete, then that is a dependency. So in that scenario, task one is a predecessor to task two. So this template that we're going to look at now does not directly allow entering predecessors, but you can still implement predecessors easily yourself. And so this is um, the flexibility that is built into the template to enable you to customize and edit as needed. So in this video, I will provide instructions as to how we can implement such predecessors. So now I have the template open and it's blank. We haven't entered any data into it yet. And so let's get started in this. For this illustration, I'm going to just enter a few resources because we want to assign the task to resources. So I am going to create three different resources here and we can assign them a color. So I can assign, let's say, blue and I'm going to click in the next cell here and I'm going to enter resource two. And this time I may choose green and then resource three. And I am going to assign a color of orange, let's say. So we have three these three colors. So now let's go to the data entry sheet, which is where we are going to enter. The, the first thing we're going to enter is the project start date. And this time we're going to have, let's say, January 15th. And one thing you would have noticed here is that I have hidden some columns in between column G and M. Those are optional columns and which are not applicable for this demonstration. So I have hidden that so that you can see the calculated columns which are important for this demonstration. So now I'm going to create a task. So let's keep it simple. Let's say I put this as task one and this is a summary task. So I'm going to leave it like this. I don't want to do anything else here. I'm going to the next uh, row and I'm going to type in task one one and this would be a subtask under task one. So keep in mind that this is the summary task and this is a subtask under that summary task. And I want to assign this to resource one. And let's say this start date is January 16th and this is going to happen for four days. So immediately the plan end date and the task ID will populate for you. So task one, two, which is our next task. And by default, it will come up with the bold color font. By default, it is taken as a summary task. But if you want to put it as a subtask, then you will see that these two are subtask under this summary task. And now I'm going to choose resource two. And this one I'm going to enter 18th and let's say this happens for eight days. And now one more, I'm going to type in task one, three, and this is also a subtask. And this one I'm going to assign to resource three. And this one, let's say starts on January 21st and it goes for two days. So now we have entered three tasks within one summary task and this is great. We have put some durations in there. And so now let's go and check the Gantt chart. So the Gantt chart looks like this. Task one, two, three. Um, and uh, let me zoom in a little bit. So task one, two, three. And we can see the specific dates on which the task will actually be done. So this is great. Everything is as expected. Now, the dependency that we want to create here is let's say we have a new task, task one, four, and I want, this is a subtask, and I am going to assign this to resource one. Now, the start date of this task, I want it to be dependent on when task one, one, and one, three are complete. So in order to implement that dependency, I am going to click in the cell, type equals, then I'm going to type max, open the parenthesis, and then I'm going to choose the end date of the task one, one, and one, three, 
So in order to do that, let me do it again, equals max, and then uh, click on the cell here, it'll be M12. I'm, con I'm pressing the control key in my keyboard and I'm pressing the task one three's plan in date. So now I have two cells selected and I can close parenthesis, hit enter. So what I've done now is I've made this to be a formula based start date, which depends on the end date of the two other tasks. And let's say I put in five as my plan duration. Immediately the plan end date gets calculated. So now let's go to the Gantt chart. And now we will see that the task one four is automatically, you know, it's created in the Gantt chart as we expect. And it starts from the 22nd. And that's because the end date of the this task and this task, 20th and 22nd Jan, the max of that is 22nd and it runs for five days, it goes to 27th. So this is how the you can implement the dependency. So let's say this one, instead of starting on the 16th, it starts only on 18th. So I'm going to put 18th and immediately this changes to 21st, but your start date for this has not changed because it's picking the maximum. Let's say you change the duration of this to eight days. And now you will see that the end date for this task moves to 26th. Immediately, the start date of task 14 also is updated to 26 because we want to pick the maximum of the two. So I picked this example so that we have multiple tasks so you can select uh, any specific task as predecessors. If I want to edit this, I can go in here and then put a comma. And let's say I also want to include the second task as a predecessor. So I select that, hit enter. So now this actually is dependent on all the three previous tasks. Okay, so now you can also see that in the Gantt chart accordingly. Now the last thing I want to show here is if you think that the dependency works in such a way that the plan start date of a task is not just the maximum day of the predecessors end dates, but it also you need to add one more day of cushion or whatever it is buffer. Uh, you can definitely type plus one here. And now you will see that the end date of the tasks are 26. But then the start date of this will be 26 plus one 27. So you can this is how you can implement dependencies or predecessors in the Gantt chart template by just typing a simple formula of max and choosing the previous uh, predecessor tasks end dates. And then whenever those dates change, you automatically your start date of the dependent task will also change. So if there are any questions about implementing such predecessors, in the Gantt chart maker Excel template, please let me know. Um, I um, again also want to highlight here in the Gantt chart template, um, we, we, we entered the resource colors in the initial setting sheet. You can easily bring them up by choosing resource colors here. Now you will see that the each task, depending on who it's assigned to, the colors will change. So you can definitely use the task colors default colors or resource colors and a lot more features are available in the Gantt chart template. If there are any questions about this template, please leave them in the comments and I'll be very happy to get back to you. Thank you very much for watching the video.